forward with R. Vardarajan, the MD of Repco Home Finance, who joins us on the phone line. Um, good afternoon and thanks so much for joining in. So first, let me take forward the point about supply side risk. Do you see an account of GST, RERA, etc., a slowdown in affordable housing, the number of houses, affordable housing that will come up on stream and therefore that impacting the loans? And not just for the near term, you know, brokerages are even saying that this long term growth that we've seen uh, might get slowed down because affordable housing may not come up at the rate at which the street is expecting. Your thoughts on the same? No, no, I, I do not agree with that view uh, for the simple reason. Uh, you know, this affordable housing is for the uh, lower and middle segment of income group. And already government has uh, come out with a special schemes of uh, your uh, subsidy well in advance. Uh, that is in place. Earlier, the, uh, the subsidy scheme was only for the urban notified towns. Now they are going to extend it to the entire country, even rural areas. Uh, on, the, on the supply side also, since a lot of concessions have been given, I, 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 we are yet to see the impact of GST on the supply side, but uh, on the government agencies, particularly for Repco, where we are operating in uh, southern states, and particularly in Tamil Nadu, where two-thirds of our book is there, and the government is already coming out on their side also for supply of uh, uh, these uh, houses. So that's what supply side also. I do not uh, see any, uh, any major impact on the supply side. Mm. And uh, in, as far as Tamil Nadu is concerned, they have already notified a few days ago, notified this uh, uh, regulatory authority rules also. Therefore, it is going to be beneficial to the ultimate consumers. All right, so Mr. Vardarajan, you're not seeing any problems on the supply side. But, you know, a couple of brokerages have highlighted about the demand side. What they're saying is that IT and NRI segments, they've been seeing job losses, you know, jobs they haven't been getting over there. I want to know from yeah. you, out of your total disbursements, how, how much of it comes in from the IT as well as uh, the NRI segments? Uh, as, as far as uh, uh, Repco yes. uh, Home Finance is concerned, uh, 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 absolutely it is negligible. Negligible? Uh, uh, negligible, less than less than 2%. Okay. So uh, I, I have been telling you, we are, we are focusing on the Tier 2 and Tier 3 centers, and particularly 60% of my book is only non-salary. Okay. So this non-salary, on the demand side also, I do not uh, see any impact on the demand side from them also. Okay, fair enough. So no demand. But let me come back to the supply side issue. We are sitting on a significant stock of unsold inventory, right? Isn't that yeah. a fact? And even off late, when we speak to, you know, uh, you know, the, the sense is that there seem to be a lot more uh, proposals about affordable housing coming up rather than, you know, houses being built on the ground and actually being sold. Uh, so in that sense, if you know a fewer number of houses are being sold, that would reduce the loan requirements, right? And if you could give us a sense of what your targets are on loan growth. See, see on, 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 the, uh, on the demand side also, see, what you are telling is right, particularly in the metro centers and urban centers. I agree with you, tier one centers. Mm. But as far as the tier two and tier three centers, we, we have been seeing there are no uh, unsold inventories. Mm. And uh, we, in, in our uh, loan book, uh, I, I can also say some 30% or 35% are all in self constructed houses where the demand continues to be there. Because right. they are all in the peripherals of rural, uh, urban centers and tier two, tier three cities. Therefore, they would like to have an indiv individual house rather than apartment site and where there are self constructed houses. So, there also the demand is only increasing. When, when we are coming out with the, this uh, capital link subsidy scheme there. That demand, we are seeing the demand on the ground level. Mm. Okay. All right, Mr. Vardaraj, I want to focus on two aspects then. You know, housing finance companies, they took away business from banks. Now the talk is that, in fact, the uh, growth on that front on, uh, housing, uh, on housing loans is not going to go so much. Wanted your take on that. And the second factor is, you know, we're talking about the lap share increasing in the book. I think for you it is at around 20%. Uh, that's going to be a tad bit risky, though, for your asset quality. You are, you are, you are right. But now, now, now the banks are also focusing on uh, this retail loans and more particularly the housing loan. Mm -hmm. uh, therefore, there is uh, the competition is uh, uh, very, very high uh, on that market. But again, uh, what I am seeing on the ground level is such type of competition is there only in the urban and metro centers, you know, where they are specialized the housing finance branch branches, you know, they are focusing on that. But uh, still, still, these tier two, tier three cities, even today, even by the banks, it is left out. But mm -hmm. the demand is high, and and, and this, uh, the, the, the particularly, you know, as I've been telling you, not even ten to twelve percent of the demand is met by the organized sector. Okay. 
therefore, it, it, it is better more banks are also coming over there, you know, uh, so that their aspirations of those people are uh, fulfilled. Okay. So your loan book grew by about 16% in Q4. Would yeah. that be the run rate that we are uh, seeing for FI18 also? Uh, no, FI FI eighteen. What what we are focusing is around a twenty percent. But the, after September, we, we based on our experience in the field, we may even uh, go up beyond twenty percent. We will we will reset our target for the current year after September. Okay, so FI eighteen grown growth will exceed twenty percent. Yeah. Okay, and any thoughts on your uh, margins for the full year? Uh, so, yeah, yeah. See, our, our, we have been consistently maintaining, if you see the last five years, consistently maintaining our spread above 3% mm. and NIM above 4%. So our, our uh, endeavor is to continue to maintain that. So whatever benefit we get from uh, cost of funds, uh, we are passing on to our consumers by reducing the interest rate, by offering finer rate, without sacrificing our normal spread and NIM. All right, uh, Mr. Vadarajan. Thanks so much, sir, for stopping by to give us all those details. All the best for FI7.